<laughs> oh boy. Wow. What a vacation. <laughs> I haven't done any recordings for, I guess, probably two months. It might be more than that. I don't know. <laughs> I know it's been a while because I had all of this behind me decorated for the holidays and was making it nice so that when people walked by they could, you know, see the inspiration, so to speak, and think about God in some way. And no, I didn't put out Happy Birthday Jesus. I just put up, you know, Christmas de decorations and Hanukkah stuff, you know, I'm just kind of having fun with it, you know, because I don't normally do those things personally because Quite frankly, I don't normally do Christmas, period. As a matter of fact, this year was probably the one year I shocked my entire family, my sisters and my wife. That's what I consider my entire family. <laughs> oh, well, but you see, they're used to me, and they know that I usually don't feel real healthy or real upbeat this time of year because it's kind of like a dark time, you know. It's kind of like, you know, the winter sets in and it's cold and my arthritis acts up and it's dark and moods set in and, you know, you have these uh, Cadian cycles or, you know, these biorhythms or whatever it is that your body goes through that affects your soul and unless you're a spiritual Christian, it can really be a bummer this time of year. Now, as a Christian, because I'm led by the Spirit, I can do things for other people and God inspires me that way, but when it comes to me personally, I really don't do Christmas. <laughs> so if you ask me what I got for Christmas, nothing. <laughs> no, I didn't. As a matter of fact, when I woke up, there wasn't any presents under my Christmas tree. As a matter of fact, I didn't get anything for Christmas. My wife wasn't even here. She was over in Utah, you know, visiting her kids and grandkids and having what you would call Christmas. Now me, I've been there, done that, did it with her once, you know, and said, well, that was nice, you know. <laughs> I'm basically done with that. But, you know, this year was different. It was kind of interesting because I did decorate things, you know, and it was kind of fun to do it, you know, and I kind of, you know, enjoyed it, and I like to say in my lifetime, you know, I did it once, you know, and a lot of things in my life I've accomplished or done once because that's all I really wanted to do. I didn't really want to, you know, be stuck in it like in a rut or make it a vain tradition or just make it over and over and over again doing it because you have to or you have these expectations but for Christmas for me it took me a long time to come to peace in my heart about who I was at Christmas because you see I always thought that I was wrong for being kind of like not with it when it came to doing it or not doing it because either way I just felt kind of not there. You know what I mean. Just kind of like, eh, you know, take it or leave it. And whenever I was working, you know, because you have to put on, you know, your best foot forward if you're working during the holidays, then it was easy for me to say Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever it may have been, and to say it without having any controversy about it. For me, it was simple. Now, I know some people out there, you know, have a problem with Christmas or saying Merry Christmas or not saying it. Not me. If somebody paid me to not say it, I didn't say it. If someone paid me to say it, I said it. Whatever they paid me, I did it. Because I figured if God's in control, then he put people in authority over me to take care of me. So I just did what they told me to do. And that's usually the way God does it when he's using a life. Now, the way I came to my piece about being maybe not in the Christmas spirit was that I realized pretty soon in life that Jesus did not celebrate his birthday. You don't see it recorded anywhere in scripture. As a matter of fact, over and over again, it's ignored. And that's what drives Christians crazy because they want to find some day to make it his birthday. And basically, you know, it's kind of like a Jewish culture thing. You really don't celebrate birthdays. You kind of do, you know, if you're Jewish, but it's kind of like not the biggest deal, you know. Bar Mitzvah, yeah, you know, such a deal, you know, or like, you know, yeah, you know, Hanukkah, no, not really, but that key got added later to compete with Christmas. But the point is, no, it really isn't, you know, a big deal for birthdays. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, you're born, and it's a celebration for the community because a son is born, or a woman's born, you know, or whatever it may be. 
But the point being is that it's kind of like private, you know, and it's not meant to be like a huge, you know, everybody gets involved, only personal, intimate friends, you know. And so, really, you don't see much of that in the scriptures because it would have been like the whole world celebrating it, kind of like what they do at Christmas. <laughs> oh well. But the point being, Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And when I read that, for me, it was like a light bulb went off. Okay, maybe it hasn't gone off yet. Do you remember Fester, you know, from the Adams family? Oh well. Maybe not. Maybe that's too old for you. But for me, it was like a light bulb went off. And suddenly I realized, well, God made me this way, so why did he make me this way at this season? And I figured out it was not to be served, but to serve. And so once I kind of talked it over with God, you know, I had a long years, and this is what sometimes people don't understand. Whenever I come to a conclusion for myself, now I don't know about your faith, but you see, everything that I believe in, I prove. I prove what I believe in. I'm not going to stand on someone else's teaching or someone else's doctrine or someone else's ideas. I'm sorry. I got a Bible, you know. I got a brain. I got my hands. I got the Spirit. You know, I got the Holy Spirit. I got Jesus. You know, I got God. If I can't figure it out, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, thank you, church, for getting me to train me, but now that I'm there, I need to move on. <laughs> Maybe you haven't yet, but... When I finally come to a conclusion in my faith for myself, as my relationship with God is led by His Spirit, then I know why and what I was designed for in that scripture and according to that purpose at that moment in time that God is using it. And in my life, it was used to design me so that I would be a servant unto others, not self-serving or service unto me. You see, even when I go to church, I'm kind of like, uh, what do I do now? You know, I'm sitting here in a pew, and man, I'd rather be, you know, like either ushering people in, teaching people, sharing in worship, doing the sound system, doing the, you know, Sunday school. Okay, maybe I don't want to do Sunday school. <laughs> Sorry, it's your kids, you train them. Don't pass the buck. But the point is, I don't really enjoy church as much because. I'm not there to be served, you know, and most churches are serving the people, you know, they're not there to serve people, they're servicing, you know, what they're doing. And so, I'm more behind the scenes kind of guy, and that's kind of the way I felt about Christmas, you know, is that Christmas for me wasn't about getting, but it was about doing for others what they may not be able to do for themselves, but to inspire them to turn the focus of their attention towards what the message was at Christmas. And so for the longest time, I used to do a lot of gospel on Christmas Day. Unfortunately, this year, I just kind of, not so much. <laughs> you see, I've gone on for a long time doing videos that I did like a huge amount of videos, recordings for a short, short period of time that, man, I can't even get them posted fast enough to catch up with what I've already posted or already recorded. And so the amazing thing to me was that God just kind of went, Hey, chill out, dude. It's okay. And I went, Dude? <laughs> you from L.A.? <laughs> hey! You know, but no, seriously. You know, the Lord took me this year to a place that I could enjoy for the first time really in my life the season. Because normally I'm kind of down. I'm usually broke. And... This year, well, yeah, we're broke. <laughs> but this time, we're covered. You know, it's like, we seem to have it, you know, even though we're poor, I mean, really poor, we seem to have it covered somehow. You know, it's like, yeah, we're not working. Yeah, we, we're living like, you know, skin of our teeth. However that expression is, because I'm not quite sure what the skin of the teeth is, but we're just getting by, you know. But the point is, I didn't get anything for Christmas, but I enjoyed the season. You see, I enjoyed my time of putting up stuff and 
and participating in what was going on in the community of people around me. I even went so far as to, you know, win, believe it or not, a decoration for the apartment. Isn't that amazing? And then I took the money from that decoration, made little baskets or little baggies of cookies and stuff, you know, put them in all the apartments. You know what? There's a lot of people in this apartment complex. <laughs> wow! Next time, <laughs> I'll count first. But, you know, it was fun. You know, we, we did it, my wife and I, before she left. You know, that we quickly, you know, tied up some bags, you know, just put a little, kind of like a streamer on it, you know, and kind of like tied up cookies, you know, and some candy and stuff and put it in and tied it, you know, tacked it onto the doors and just said, Merry Christmas, you know, not, not an evangelism thing, not a big, you know, to-do thing, but just a, a caring thing. You know, and sometimes that's what makes the difference is that you don't always have to be, you know, so overboard, though I am. You don't have to always be, you know, always on fire, though most of the time, eh, you know, some people say I am. You can be silent. You can be, you know, just doing some nice stuff for people just because that's what God inspires you to do. And that's what my Christmas was. God inspired me to do what I wanted to do anyways. Oh, I didn't get a Christmas tree. You know, I have these phony trees that I use all year round, you know. And they got little white lights on them, so they kind of doubled as a Christmas tree. You know, we have this little, like, um, thing that changes color one too, you know, so that kind of doubled for a Christmas tree. You know, and we have, you know, trees that are like false trees that light up at night, you know, kind of, you know, on this patio and, you know, so I just kind of took it from there and went to Nine Nines in store and bought some decorations and just slapped it all together. And you know what? God honored that. As a matter of fact, God didn't just honor that. God inspired that. And you know what? God didn't just inspire that. God used that. And I'm so blessed to sit back and to go, wow, look at this mess, God. You going to clean it up? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> I get the mess to clean up. That figures. <laughs> but it was good, and I had fun. And that's the point. If you had a Christmas and you didn't have fun in some way, you're really missing what being a Christian is all about. You see, yes, the world's coming to an end. Yes, there's serious issues in the world, you know, going on, you know, and there's social problems and religious problems and there's killings and murders and fightings and gnashings of teeth and people going, mm, you know, and fearful and excited and joyful and whatever they may be, which is basically what Jesus said when he said, married and given in marriage as it was in the days of Noah, so it would be like in the days of the Son of Man when he returns. Everything just goes on like it does every day. But how you view it, how God inspires you through it, how God uses you in the midst of it, that's what makes it fun. Because you see, if you're a Christian and you're really not living each day after the way the Lord said to live it, you know, rejoicing in the Lord always and this is the day the Lord's made so rejoice and be glad in it look for the opportunities today if you hear his voice harden not your heart as it says in the provocation because God will intervene uh, there's no many spirits who suck to God will come down God will reveal himself on any day you choose to just open your heart and let him do what he wants to do in you and you know what? This last Christmas, <laughs> though I didn't get anything for Christmas, though I really didn't do any major work for God, there was a lot accomplished. And the Spirit of God moved in beautiful ways. In ways that maybe you can't put a finger on it. You can't say, ha ha, ho ho, he he, hoo hoo, there it is, there it was, here it is, there it happened. But God is moving, and He's accomplishing His purpose. And this last Christmas in my life, I'm excited because He did.